In this video, we're going to learn how to use splines to extrude geometry. All right, so in the last lesson, we talked a little bit more about extrusions and the different ways that we could do that, like extruding to create convex shapes that actually go into an object. And we learned the importance of using inset to create rims before we do that. And then we also looked at the bevel tool which gives us an extrusion and then adds the step of beveling an object, uh, which can make things go a little bit faster. So now let's talk about extruding a long spline, because this can be very helpful to create things like wires or um, something like maybe even the legs of this drone here. And it does have a few caveats, and we'll talk about how that works, um, and we'll talk about what is the best method to use with this. So let's go ahead and go to our Create panel and let's go over to shapes and you'll see that we're already under spline so let's go to align now what we're going to do is we're going to draw out the shape of our leg and what I want to do is I want to use my left view to do this and I'm going to basically just draw out the shape of this I'm not too worried about these swooping curves I just want to hit the points in which it changes direction now whenever I'm clicking these points you'll notice it drops down a vertex if I want to create a straight line from one point to another, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to left click. Now I'm going to left click right at the edge of this curve and then hold down Shift and continue to do that until I go all the way through to this point. And I'm actually going to stop right here. Remember we have the symmetry modifier. What I want to do is I want to keep that in mind and I'm going to utilize that even with this spline. So what I need to do is just left click right here in about the center and then I'm going to right click to end the creation of that spline. Let's go to our modify panel. Let's go to vertex mode and I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to select this vertex right here and I just want to make sure that it's zeroed out in the Y direction. All right. So now that we have all of these points in place, I need to curve it to give it the shape that we see here. So to do that, let's select all of the vertices in the line, except for this one right here. And we're going to right click, and I'm going to convert them from a corner tangent type, which gives us those straight lines, to a Bezier corner tangent type. Now Bezier corner, what it's going to do is it's going to give me handles in which I can move to change the shape. Now Bezier corner, what it does is it breaks the handles from one another. So I can move each side of the line independently from one another. Now if I were to right click on this and go to Bezier, what this does is it locks the handles in this straight position and it, it gives us a nice smooth effect. The only downside to doing this is it doesn't allow us to break the handle from one another and create really sharp edges if we need those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, let's convert those back to Bezier corner and you can convert these at any time so don't worry about that and then I'm going to select each vertex individually now for this to work properly what I like to do is I like to click on the X and Y on my move tool so they're highlighted in yellow what that allows me to do is move the handles freely in any direction now if I were to click on the X direction only notice it's only highlighted in yellow I cannot move it in the Y direction it's only in the X direction that I can move it. So I like to use both directions and move them freely. And then I'll come in and just make my adjustments here. Let me go ahead and pull this one up a little. And I'm going to break this one right here. Make that straight up and down. Same thing with this one. Let me grab that. And you'll notice that as I start to get more horizontal, the line actually automatically snaps to make that straight. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, why don't you curve that out? Well, it might be a little bit easier to use a chamfer tool, or not chamfer, but fill it on this vertex and split it into two vertices. So the way I'm going to do this is by going down into the rollouts under geometry here, and you'll find this fillet tool. Now the way this works is you can left click on fillet and then left click and drag on the vertex and do it interactively or what you could do is type in a value. Now you can type in the value but once you set that value it's done. So if I type in 1 on this you'll notice that it reverts back to 0. 
and I can no longer use fillet on that vertex again. Now I could hit control Z to undo and then go back. What I like to do is use the interactive. So I'm going to left click on this vertex and just drag that out until I get the curve that I want out of this. So I'm going to go to right about here. That feels good. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to use fillet. Okay, so that's on. I'm going to left click and drag that out. It might be a little difficult to see, but hopefully that, that shows up there. So now I have this nice curve that is following along with that spline. Now we've only done this in the left view, so we want to make sure that we are moving things around in the front view as well. So let's go to our front view by hitting F, and we need to turn off vertex mode and put this into position over here. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure it's centered up on this piece right here. So right now I have the X axis locked here. So I'm going to come in a little bit closer and I'm going to get that as close as I can. There we go. Now I'm also going to hit P on the keyboard just to check to make sure that that's right in the center there and it appears to be a little off. So let's click on the Y value or the Y axis and then come up here get in close to that and then I'm just going to left click and drag that and it doesn't appear to be moving let me try that let me try grabbing the handle it should move the the line but it's not doing it that's fine all right so there we have that really close that's in position uh, let's go back to our front view by hitting F and then I'm going to go to vertex mode and I need to pull these vertices into position here. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to pull those to the left and that should really all I uh, should really be the only thing I need to do except for maybe this vertex right here. We pull that to the left and it's really close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the handles. Let me go ahead and pull this to the left there. That looks good. Okay, and I just want to make sure it's nice and relaxed. I don't want things like this where it comes out and then goes into it. I want it to flow into it nice and neat. All right, that feels good. So now that we have that spline in place, what do we do with it? How do we get the geometry? Well, what we would do is we would use the extrude along spline. Now, I know that there was a lot of setup to this, but the extrusion part is really easy. So looking at this, let's go to Editable Poly, let's go to Polygon Mode, and select these polygons here. Now what I need to do first is I need to inset that to create that rim, and I really want to create a polygon that's going to be about the size of that leg that comes off of that. So let's do something like 2.5 off of that, and then hit OK. Now what I can do is go ahead and use Extrude along Spline, and I'm going to bring up the settings first. Now there are a lot of settings with this and it does give you a lot of control. Um, let's worry about one step at a time. Let's do the picking the, of the spline. So we've created it and so now I'm going to click on pick and you'll notice it highlights the spline in yellow and then there we go. So it has extruded that out and it looks pretty good for the most part. Now it's pretty low resolution so I need to make sure that I set that up and let's go ahead and add more segments and the more segments we add the smoother this is going to get so I can continue to add these and let's do something maybe around 28 segments so you'll notice it gets really smooth it gets a little curvy uh, around the the angles and that feels really good now the really neat thing about this is you do have some other controls like um, the amount of taper that you have on that now in this case it's not really the best thing unless you have that in your design uh, but I do want to let you know that you do have that availability. Now we also have the taper curve. Now this will kind of bloat the object in the middle. Okay, And then let's set that back to zero on that. Now there is also a twist on this and you can adjust that and that will twist the, the polygons. Sometimes it doesn't work all that well. 
and it, sometimes it's based on this value right here. This is going to ask us if we want to extrude along the spline in the world space or along the actual spline itself. In my case, I want to do it along the spline, so it's left our value there. Let's take our twist to zero. Let's leave everything else as zero and then just simply hit OK. So now that we have this, it does create a polygon on the back side there, which is fine. We could go ahead and delete that um, out so that way we don't have it whenever the symmetry is applied. So now if we go back up, you'll see that we now have our legs and things are starting to really come together. Now that we've done that, we did give it a little bit of a higher resolution to get those curves and I wanted to make sure that I keep those because I, I really need that shape to be right. So if we look at it with the open subdiv applied, you'll see that the curves look really good. They give us the right uh, shape. Now we will have to do some creasing and things like that on the actual drone body to get the, uh, the proper shape uh, that we see here, but we'll be talking about that a little later. Let's go ahead and turn off the open subdiv, and now we're ready to move on to the next part, and I want to start talking about how to uh, create the motor and the propellers of the drone.